what is the ultimate goal of any trade? To buy before everyone buys and to sell before everyone sells. Well, how exactly can you do that? Order flow. Hello traders, and welcome to a new day trading strategy video of mine. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a simpler method in using order flow to scalp with everyday trades. Alright, so as many traders probably know, the market will move in cyclical patterns of buying and selling. Uh, it might seem on many charts that the market really can't ever go lower, or it might seem on, on, on other charts that the market is reaching a point where it, it can really never go higher. This has never been the case and will never be the case, likely. Uh, whenever there's an uptrend, there's going to be some retracement. Whenever there's a downtrend, there's going to be some retracement. And that's the way that the, the market operates. Well, why does it operate this way? And why do trends occur? Well, trends occur due to what I put here was conformity and emotions. And when I talk about conformity, I mean both subconscious conformity and conscious conformity. Uh, what, what, would, what would that mean, in, let's say, in an uptrend? Well, in an uptrend, conscious conformity that you might see would be, let's say that a trader has many friends who are also traders and you know reads, reads internet posts and, uh, and so on, and he reads that everyone is buying a certain coin. He might conform to that popular p opinion that the coin is quite bullish and buy as well, and that is conformity, consciously. Subconscious conformity can also occur. What that might be is if he, and this could actually impact his emotions probably, if he's looking at a price chart and he sees that the market is just skyrocketing and that the order book is showing, the order history is showing many people are using market orders to buy in, he might get fear of missing out and he might feel like he wants to be part of the herd who is making a profit and buy right in. Typically, when you buy after everyone buys, that is exactly when a retracement or even a reversal is likely to come. So what we're going to do is the exact opposite. We're going to be selling to those kinds of guys who are buying emotionally or buying due to conformity. And in that way, we can actually be the leaders within these trends and hopefully attain the goal of becoming the first buyer into an uptrend or the first seller into a downtrend. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to look at the one hour counters ratio on tensorcharts.com. I've talked about this before, but today is going to be a much more in-depth, uh, deeper example into using it to buy into retracements, into an uptrend, and into a downtrend. So just to start off, without even thinking of any of that, take a look at the counters ratio below volume, that's here, and then take a look at the price chart and, notice, and try to notice if you see any patterns between the correlation. What you might notice is that red periods typically are market bottoms, the heavier red periods, meaning the lower red typically lead to a market bottom. The heavier top, meaning you know, um, the higher up the green is, typically that's a market top. Let's actually look here. Here we had a good amount of buying uh, that had occurred on the counters ratio, a lot of green, that was market top. Here we had a good amount of selling, and the most selling had occurred, the market bottom, makes complete sense. Here we had a minor market top, and we had a minor amount of green volume right below it. And I'm looking right here. Uh, I don't like to scroll down because this annoying thing pops up. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's, where, that's where it is. We also had a good amount of um, buying that occurred at this market top as well. As you can see, from here, it looks like from that candlestick to this candlestick, we had a lot of buying occur. So the basic strategy with this is when prices in an established trend, we want to buy when we're in a red period. Where these red and green periods, what do they represent? Well, the one-hour counters ratio, which is what you're looking at, it will it will read a value that is red if there has been more market selling than there has been market buying using market orders, which is typically used by retail traders. If there has been more market selling than market buying, then what you're going to see is a red counters ratio uh, in the last hour. If you see in the last hour that more people have been using market orders to buy than to sell, then you're just going to see a green uh, counters ratio. So we can use this to really gauge when we're overbought and oversold in the short term. And that's really what I'm looking at here, looking for those really where, where the points where price goes green and the points where, uh, not price goes green, points where the counters ratio goes green and points where the counters ratio goes uh, red. And then doing the opposite of what other people have already done. How do we use this? Well, we don't want to use this by itself. That would 
probably not be a great idea. Uh, we also don't want to use this without context. We need to know if price is an established trend, if it's consolidating, if it's a weak or a strong trend, and uh, so on. We could use trigger or execution indicators, or we could just use both. That would be fine as well. Trigger indicators are indicators that give you a strong indication to buy or to sell. This would be RSI, MFI, those types of indicators going overbought or oversold. Uh, execution indicators actually give you a specific price to buy or sell at, and that's going to be like Fibonacci's and volume profile and uh, SR levels, of course, support resistance levels. So with this strategy, with scalping using order flow, you want to open a trade when price is trending in the direction of your trade. And then what you want to wait for is a retracement, a move against that direction of uh, the trend, and then buy into that with a bullish trend, and then sell into that uh, if price is in a bearish trend. So let's take a look at some examples here. All right, so first example, we have Bitcoin, and it looks like we have a uptrend. Now if you notice here, we have a heavy period of buying. So we, if we're looking to buy into this uptrend, this is probably not a great spot. Again, this is 2020 hindsight, but let's try to just look more at the counters ratio. This is probably not a great spot to buy. Uh, and, and here as well, this is probably not a great spot to buy as well because we have a green counters ratio and price isn't really moving up too quickly. When the counters ratio is high or when the counters ratio is, is green, we want to see price moving up very quickly because that shows that demand is giving an increase of price and that there might not be many offers above price. Uh, if there are many offers above price, then what you're actually going to see is price is going to have a hard time moving up because there are many sell walls, of course, uh, but you still see a lot of market buying. That is not a great sign. That is typically what's going to lead to a sell-off because that's going to be market makers or HFTs that are putting out very large limit sell orders so with that when many retail traders buy into those limit sell orders, um, those market makers get to sell to fantastic price. So you want to always notice the amount of price movement relative to the counters ratio. That is very important as well. If you look down here, price slowly moves uh, lower. It doesn't really, it, it struggles a bit to make new lows because we get instant pullback here. We have pullback here, and then we have some major pullback here, a little bit of bearish retracement here. We do have a red counters ratio here, a green counters ratio here, but now we have another red around here. And this looks like a really weak downtrend. This could be a potential spot to buy and then put a stop loss maybe below 81 or below uh, 8,000. That would be probably okay. Uh, and here's what the market did. So the market immediately shot right up uh, after this red period of counters ratio where many retail traders were actually selling, unfortunately for the retail traders. Uh, they wouldn't have known that price went up from about 8.2 to around 8.6K in a matter of, I think, an hour, unfortunately for them. Um, but if you might notice here, this would also probably not be a great spot to buy. This would be a good spot to buy. And I'm looking again looking at the counters ratio down here. This would be a good spot to buy. That corresponds to here. This would be a good spot to buy as well. And that corresponds to here. Okay. So this is a new example. We can look at this one again. Just to start off, I see that before this very strong uptrend occurs, we see we see more of a consolidating market and we see a very high uh, bearish counters ratio uh, or red counters ratio that you can see right there below the 6 a.m. Uh, that you see there. And then we get that strong uptrend with a very green counters ratio. Now we have a really weak downtrend, but we have a red counters ratio here, meaning that, what does this mean? Well, this means a few things are happening. This means that there are likely many bids, so that there's high demand from the market makers, there's high demand from the HFTs, high frequency traders, uh, that are putting bids up here for large orders. Why do I say that? Well, if a lot of people are market selling and there weren't a lot of bid orders, then price would likely be here, right? Because they'd be selling down to here. But because the bids actually kept up price, this is actually a pretty bullish sign to maybe even jump in the market because we still see some market selling here. Uh, and this is what happens. Uh, not surprisingly, we just get a continuation of the uptrend. And honestly, here, even without using uh, without using order flow, which I, I would recommend you do use, this is already such a strong uptrend, and this is already a, a pretty weak downtrend, that this would already in itself be a, a pretty good um, reason to buy, especially if this is a long period of consolidation. And then you see that these orders, that the orders out of 8,800 here and here get burst right through, 
you might I might even recommend buying when price actually goes a little bit above 8800 because that would be buying on a breakout and not buying into an established uptrend. And then the best the second best spot to buy would be here. But this spot would make more sense from an order flow standpoint and would probably be giving you better risk reward than than this as again as strange as that sounds. Yep, so price does go higher. And again, same same thing happens. We see that the red counters ratio here would have been a decent spot to buy into and the green up here. So again, all you need to look at is just two things when you're using the simple counters ratio method. How much price change is occurring and how much price change is occurring relative to how much market selling and market buying is occurring. How do you find market selling and market buying? You just look at the counters ratio. Higher the green, more market buying. Uh, lower, the, lower the red, or and it's also gonna be a little bit brighter, the higher the selling during that period. All right, let's go to the next example here. So it looks like we have an uptrend, uh, but we do have a very strong bearish move here. Now here's the question we need to ask ourselves. Is this a bear trap? Uh, a bear trap is gonna be a spot where two things will be happening. Many retail traders are probably gonna be opening shorts, uh, A, and then B, many retail traders who had long positions might be selling their uh, coins at a bad price so that market makers and HFT's institutions can buy in at a fantastic price and capture profits in the uptrend. What is this? Well, this looks to be a potential spot to buy. And I know in 2020 hindsight, because the market does go up, in 2020 hindsight, it's not fair for me to say this uh, because I, I know what happens and you probably know what happens too. But just looking at the facts here, we have, it looks like an A, B, C, Elliott wave move with C being about a 1.618 of A, looks like that. Uh, it also looks like this from here to here to here, it looks to be a 61.8 retracement. So I'm just putting some execution indicators onto this, not just using counters ratio. And then to go to the counters ratio, we have a lot of retail market selling occurring here. Uh, the only bad thing, everything looks good, but the only bad thing that, that I've mentioned in the past is you want to see how much price change occurs relative to the selling. A good amount of price change has occurred relative to the market selling, so typically this would probably not be a fantastic spot to buy. I would much rather see the market slow, slowly move down like something like that on very, very high market selling because that's going to show me that everyone who wanted to sell has sold uh, and that the market didn't respond by crashing, right? So this is what happens. Uh, market goes down and then actually creates a double bottom and then goes up. This double bottom could have occurred just because of how much momentum the market already had moving downward. And this spot right here, this spot, I, I don't know if it's the best spot to, to sell, but after it forms a double bottom, this might be the spot that you might want to buy. And then you could even put a stop loss at around 84, uh, 83.99, 83.98 right down here, below here. You're gonna have a pretty good risk reward, and uh, you know, 2020 hindsight, you would have made a, a good deal of money if you had bought here with this red counters ratio there as well. So this would be more of a controversial spot to buy, but it would not have been a terrible spot to buy. And you can see here as well, this is another good spot to, to buy. Okay, so I really like this example uh, because of just how much market selling had occurred here relative to the price change. So this counters ratio, as you can probably see on uh, this is for Ethereum, is incredibly large. A lot of a lot of retail had used market orders to sell. Price did go low, but price didn't really go that low that quickly. This might look like a lot of red, and that yeah, you know, a lot of people are selling here. A lot of people are selling here, but price isn't vertically downward. It's moving from about uh, six nine because I'm zoomed in. That's why it might look a little bit more violent. It's six ninety two down to 678 for the low. So that's only about, I think, 14, uh, a 14 buck drop, which is really nothing in crypto. So this would be actually, honestly, a, a, looks like a really good spot to buy. Uh, you have a volume spike here, which typically represents a change in the trend. Uh, you see very, very high retail market selling here as well. And if you had bought, I mean, this, this would have been right here. Not only did this create one wave of a really nice uptrend for this great uh, up move here, it also led to another wave just because of how many retail traders had already sold here. What, what do I mean by that? Well, think about the retail traders. Uh, imagine that they're the only ones trading in the market. If all the retail traders sell, and this is a vacuum example, of course, if all the retail traders sell and then none of them, none of them are in the market and we buy, we're going to be buying at the best price possible. I mean, here is the best price possible in the local uh, short term. And what's going to happen is that those retail traders are going to begin to buy this up around near the market tops, as retail typically does on emotion. 
and then we can sell to them at the market tops when they are just buying in hordes and price is either making a high tail or price is moving up very, very slowly. Uh, that's a, typically a sign that we want to sell when this goes very green. Uh, and then we could even potentially buy right, buy right back in when they start to freak out again uh, on a dip and then capture that and maybe just sell when we get uh, volume spikes or you know high counters ratio. And this is just taking advantage of data offered by tensorcharts.com by looking at market orders. Uh, and yeah. So here we have another example. Okay, this is, yep, this is the Binance coin. So this is from Binance. The counters ratio on this I found works quite well because this, this coin, uh, many retail traders and emotional traders do tend to, to trade this coin at not the best spots. So if you are in Binance, this actually is not a terrible coin to, uh, to scalp if you are interested in, in scalping or doing something like that. So if we look at the chart here, small period of consolidation, incredibly high period of, of buying from, from uh, the counters ratio. So this is telling me that price is having a really hard time moving higher. That's already pretty bearish. However, just about everyone and their grandmother has, has bought uh, the Binance coin around here, BNB. So this is a pretty good spot to sell and not surprisingly, what happens to the retail traders? Yeah, price just whoosh, shoots right down from about 9 to 8.5, which by my math is like a 6% drop, a 6, 7% drop immediately like that within I think one hour. So this would have been a not too bad spot to short or sell your holdings if you uh, owned any, just because of how heavy this uh, market buying is. And potentially you could reason trying to buy back at these lower prices here. If you think that these people who had bought here got flushed out of the market around here, then yeah, it would, it would probably be a good spot to buy from the retail traders. All right, so here's another example that's pretty similar. Uh, I, I see a very strong downtrend which is already bearish to me. I'm not looking to buy, I'm probably looking to short or I'm looking to sell. I see a tight period of consolidation here. Price doesn't really know where to go. However, at the end of this consolidation, I'm seeing very high market buying. I'm seeing a lot of people market buying, but I'm not seeing price move anywhere. What that's telling me is that there's probably a limit sell order here, also as an offer, offer wall or a sell wall. There's likely a sell wall at 690 that's holding very, very strong. And many retail traders are trying to buy from that sell wall after this occurs. Yeah, this is what happens. Uh, price goes down to 650 within a matter, I think, like five hours. So not too, uh, not too good for the retail traders who had mass bought here. And again, this actually would probably not be a terrible spot to begin thinking about using Fibonacci's or MFI or RSI to try to buy back into the market after you see that these uh, counters ratios begin to look pretty good. All right, so here is another example. We see that a good amount of buying that occurs here, a very, very high amount of buying that occurs here. And, and what I want to show with this example is this amount of buying is higher than any other point of buying with, within this uh, snapshot of the chart. You can see that this was the highest that uh, amount of buying that had occurred on the counters ratio. Like you'd expect, a lot of retail traders are buying this up and price goes quite quickly downward. This was the spot that I had alluded to right there. Price makes a little bit of a higher jump, probably a 1.618 of this move here. Uh, and then price just, just uh, moves downward. And again, looking for good spots to buy and good spots to sell. This would probably be a very good spot to sell here. And it's, it's saying the counters ratio showing here is a good spot to buy. Uh, here is a good spot to sell because it's green, of course. That's right here. And then it, maybe a uh, good spot to buy would be around here, but not really. And then a good spot to sell, green. And then uh, another good spot to buy would be right there. Okay, so that's going to do it for just a quick look at the counters ratio and comparing that to price movements and looking at uh, bid walls and, and offer walls. Two things that I have to say. Uh, one thing I think I've already said many times, do not use this indicator by itself. This is an indicator that you want to combine with other indicators such as uh, technical indicators, MFI, you know, so on. Fibonacci's do work quite well with this indicator, uh, but I would recommend doing that if you're more of an advanced trader who can read momentum and who can read volume, and that's probably the strategy that you might want to use. Um, it can also be combined with sentiment, you know, using BFX LS, Bitfinex long short positions on TradingView. Uh, that would probably work quite well in tandem with, uh, with this strategy. 
Uh, one more note is just the, the basic overview of, of, what, of how the strategy operates and why it succeeds. If you see strong bullish movement and then weak bull and weak bearish movement and you're looking for a spot to buy, what you need to see is that the counters ratio turns red. You want to see that retail traders are beginning to sell off and panic. And when you see that, after a very strong up move and then a weak down move, that's telling me that weak down move is telling me that price is having a hard time moving lower because many market makers and HFTs might be energetic to put limit buy orders to prevent price from going lower because they want to get filled. And that could represent actual high demand. Even though it might look like it's very high supply because everyone's selling, look how much price has actually changed. If it hasn't changed much, that could be a period of uh, it could be followed by a period of high demand. Where I think I had a great example of that. That yep, that occurred here. Uh, this kind of period of high demand after the HFTs and the market makers and and and, and usually the traders who make the most money in the market uh, use limit orders to buy in here, and then price goes up. And then you typically want to sell after everyone buys. So you want to sell when all the retail traders begin uh, buying at the market top. And there are a lot of examples of this. I think, yeah, you know, like here, when you see a lot of, uh, when you see higher counters ratios, like uh, very, very uh, high green, this is typically a spot you might want to sell after you buy. Uh, and same here, typically a spot you want to buy after everyone sells. Uh, you would have bought here and, and so on. All right, so those are the two things that I wanted to add. I, I just thought of another as well. When you're using the counters ratio and you're looking to trade, it's probably going to look kind of weird and strange to, to buy in uh, when it's telling you to buy in. And the reason that is is because there, it's natural for any retail trader to have some subconscious conformity. And I mean, and for me as well, when I see everyone is buying something and the price is going up, it's very tempting to buy back, to buy right in. The best thing that you can do uh, is to wait for that retracement and to wait for everyone who just bought in at a bad price to believe that the market's just going to move down and then sell at a bad price and they're going to be selling right to you. If you can just have that patience to wait for um, moves to end and, and for and for retail traders to really show their show their uh, their moves like it's a chess game, then uh, that's where you're going to be. That's probably the best spot to buy from or the best spot to sell from. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, then feel free to check out my Patreon if you want to suggest a video or vote. And uh, yeah. Have a nice day.